So it's July and that can only mean one thing. A three-week festival of cycling that is the Tour de France. And here, in no particular order, are 10 facts that you can amaze your cycling chums with about the race. The first was in 1903, making 2018 the 105th edition. So far in the history of the Tour, there have only been two significant gaps, and that was between 1914 and 1916 due to the First World War, and again in 1940 to 1946 because of the Second World War. That first edition was incredibly hard. It only had six stages and totaled 2,428 kilometres. So that's an average of around 400 kilometres a stage compared to the 170, 180 that we have today. And in case you're wondering, it was won by Frenchman Maurice Garin. Back in 1903, literally anybody could enter the race. All you had to be was foolhardy enough, own a bike and have the 10 franc entry fee. Imagine if that was the case today. Now the prizes back then, the first prize was 30,000 francs, which was the equivalent of 30 times the average workman's wages. Uh, and for a stage win, you'd receive an additional 3,000 francs. The Tour de France is the world's largest annual sporting event and is one of cycling's three grand tours, the other two being the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta d'Espagna. It has around 21 stages over three weeks and will cover a distance of between 2,500 to 3,000 kilometres. There will be flat stages for the sprinters, climbing stages in the Alps and Pyrenees, plus a couple of rest days. Now, although it's called the Tour de France, it will occasionally have stages in other countries. So for us here in the UK, we've had stages in 1974, 1994, 2007 and 2014. And judging by that, it's basically anything with a four in it. There are three main jerseys. The famous yellow jersey for the overall tour leader, the polka dot jersey for the leader in the King of the Mountains competition and the green jersey in the leader of the sprinters competition. Now the rider who wears the polka dot jersey or the green jersey is determined by a series of points which are awarded to the rider who crosses sub-finishing lines within the race. Contrary to what some people think, the winner isn't the person who's crossed the finish line the most. It's the one who has the lowest aggregate time for the entire race. The narrowest winning margin in tour history was in 1989, when American Greg LeMond beat Frenchman Laurent Fignon by 8 seconds on the final time trial up the Champs-Élysées on the final day in Paris. Now, Le Mans' victory that day was surrounded in controversy as he decided to ride some newfangled triathlon-style aero bars instead of his standard road bike. Nowadays, riding a time trial bike is pretty standard stuff, but back then it was pretty radical. The main group of riders in the Tour is called the Peloton, and this comes from the French word for herd, as in herd of cows. Another quirky little French term that you may hear while watching the race is Lantern Rouge, which is given to the rider who is last on GC. And this comes from back in the day when French trains used to literally have a red lantern on the end of them. The first person to ever wear a yellow jersey was Frenchman Eugène Christophe back in 1919. Up until then, riders used to wear very dull grey woolen jerseys, but the race organisers felt that it needed something so that spectators could identify the race leader, and so the famous yellow jersey was born. In the previous edition of the Tour, in 1913, Christophe had been the favourite to win. But as he was climbing the Tourmalet in the Pyrenees, he was clipped by a car and knocked to the ground. Fortunately, he was unhurt, but the forks on his bike were completely snapped in two. 
Undeterred, he picked his bike up and walked 12 miles to the village of Saint-Marie de Campin, where he found a forge and proceeded to repair the forks himself with 22mm steel tubing. Now, under the rules of the tour in those days, riders were not allowed to receive any assistance whatsoever. And despite repairing the bike himself, he did enlist the help of a seven-year-old boy to operate the forge's bellows, and consequently received a 10-minute time penalty by the tour organization, and that basically cost him that year's race. Now, would you believe it, but a similar incident happened on that 1919 tour. Christoph snapped the forks on his bike. He managed to get to a forge where he proceeded to repair them himself, only to be overtaken by Belgian rider Fermin Lambot, resulting in Christoph finishing third in general classification of the overall race. And finally, not so much a fact, but if you've been watching the Tour de France highlights here in the UK on ITV4, you will have undoubtedly seen the most ass-clenchingly cringeworthy advert in the history of TV advertising. Good job guys, great performance today, but there's no time for rest, let's keep up the fight. By the way, it is also important to fight for strong hair, even for you. Just two minutes a day gives your hair more power. Alpacin Caffeine Shampoo. Fight for your hair. So, if you found this film useful, please like and share. And if you'd like to get the most out of your cycling, please consider subscribing for my regular weekly uploads. Thanks for watching.